Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. A question that you post very often on my videos or on my Facebook page is how can I incorporate, how can I memorize all these chord voicings that I sit down to practice? And it's very true, it can be kind of frustrating that we sit down and then we take some sort of chord voicing, we learn that all over the neck and check out all the inversions, but it doesn't really get into our playing, so we don't really get to use it when we're comping or playing chord melody or playing a chord solo. So you can actually solve this problem and in this video I'm going to give you some ideas on how you approach this, the kind of work that you need to do and what you have to think about. I'm going to do this using partly just a modal setting because of course sometimes we need to use chord voices in a modal setting and I'm also going to demonstrate how to do this thinking more of how you can use it in progressions. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, about improvising over chord changes and checking out some interesting arpeggios and scales, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. The first place that most people run into this is when they start working with drop two voicings. Now the reason for that is probably that that's the first place where you start working sort of in a systematic way with learning several voicings all over the neck for the same chord. And that means that you have to internalize a lot more information. You have to process a lot more information and insert that into your playing. So I'm going to use that as an example because that seems just really appropriate. Uh, and that's also where I find that most people are asking about this. Uh, I'm going to use the top string set and then I'm just going to use an A minor uh, 7 voicing as an example. I think that's the easiest way to go with it. So that would be these chords. The obvious thing that you need to start with here and the first step in learning how to use a voicing like this is what you're probably already doing. Uh, so that's just playing the voicings along the neck being aware of where they are, uh, having at least some sort of idea about what the notes are in the voicing. And you want to, of course, be able to do this in other keys as well, probably all 12. The thing that most of us forget when we're working like this is that we can now learn the voicing, sort of four voicings at a time. So, or maybe if you're learning all the string sets, then you're learning 12 voicings at a time. And that's a lot of information. And when you want to incorporate it into your playing, take one voicing at a time really because you need to figure out like, okay, well, if I play this chord, how am I going to connect it to all the other things that I have in my playing? This is really important if you want to be able to use it, that you cannot only have sort of the theoretical idea or the idea like, okay, it looks like this on the neck, but if you actually have to use it in a musical way, you kind of have to hear what it sounds like. I think especially you need to have an idea about what the melody sounds like in the context. And uh, if we take the modal context first, so let's say we have our four, or two voicings, where if you're working on this, I think it's likely that you already have this in your system. So this is one that we are kind of already familiar with, and if we have to play over an A minor chord, then we kind of know how this works already. Maybe with this one, not so much. So you need to find a way to use this one and make some sort of connection between how the A minor that you know sounds and how this sounds. And you need to find some ways of getting that into, into your playing and into your ears. Probably the way you want to do this is just to take that one voicing and then maybe play over a loop where you have like a bass, bass line. So that could be something like this. The way you're going to get this voicing into your playing, if we're just looking at this one, is then that you can really hear, this is my A minor, and I, I have an idea about that this is A minor, and I can hear the bass, and then I can hear how moving to this one sounds different but still works as a chord. And I find some way to move from this one to, its, to this one, and that way just connect it to the sound. Uh, what you probably also, I think this is really important when it comes to voicings, and, and also something that we don't necessarily do that much, uh, as guitar players, is that you want to think about what the melody note is. So in this case, we really have the, the flat seven in the melody. It is really a modal minor sound. And of course, once you have that, you can start to look at, well, can I connect it with other things in terms of other melody notes? If you know this, you probably also know this one before you start taking out all the drop two voicings. And in that way, you can sort of slowly just build a vocabulary, try and see how you can use this voicing in the context of the other voicings that you have for the A minor already. And 
And that's really what's important here. It's important that you connect this single voicing with everything else that you're playing when you're playing uh, in, in the context of, in, in this case, an A minor, but wherever you want to use it. If we don't do this for each of the voicings, then they're just going to stay being sort of these inversions that we practice as scale exercise. If you want to incorporate these A minor 7 voicings into your playing and you want to use them on songs with a lot of chords like jazz standards, then you probably want to look at how you can use them in uh, in different smaller progressions that are going to be uh, common to a jazz standard. So of course the obvious choice for an A minor 7 is that it's the 2 chord in a 2 5 one in the key of G major. So 2 5 one in the key of G major is A minor 7, D7 and G major 7. And if you want to play that then you need to have the drop 2 voicings for the A minor of course, but you also need, for, need the drop 2 voicings for the, for the other chords that are in that progression. Uh, so that means that we need to have D7 like this and G major 7. You need to connect these different voicings because that's the progression that you're going to come across and that's also how you're going to find a way to get them into your playing because you need to hear them in a context where they fit and you can't voice lead uh, an a, a drop 2 voicing to a triad or to a drop 3 voicing all the time. So it's better to just really make sure that you have drop two voicings that are going to cover all the chords that you need to play. If we take this A minor 7, now the D7 that we could move to here is just going to be the one in the same position. So that's going to be this one. And then we will resolve to this G major 7. So now we have this 2 5 1 progression. And this is really important that you start looking at, well, if I'm playing this type of progression, then this is the A minor where I start. And the logical place to go from here is to take this one. And the logical place to voice lead the next one is going to be this one. When you're using all drop two voicings, you just have to stay in the same area and then you're going to be fine. You don't really have to think about the voice leading, but you do want to have the, the chord placed in the context of the other ones and connect them because that's where you need them, and that's how you're going to get into a playing. You can do this for all the chords then. Once you've figured out how to do this for these smaller progressions, then you can start looking at taking that through a standard. And if you're working on drop two voicings, I can really recommend just trying to play through a, an entire standard, and actually just trying also to stay in one position with only drop two voicings. That's an extremely good exercise. The first few times you do it, it's going to be difficult. You want to maybe check out like the basic 2-5-1s and maybe the minor 2-5-1s as well in advance, so you have an idea about how to do that. And then you're sort of taking the problem solving and uh, from the level of just figuring out where the voicing is, but also just to recognize sort of a smaller block of chords and then deal with them in one go. And that's going to open it up a lot more. And then you can also start to be a lot more free with how you're using the voicings. To sum up what I went over in this video, you have to remember that it's more than just learning how to play the voicings. You really also have to spend some time really figuring out how to play them, how to insert them into the context where you want to use them. And really that comes down to just comping in the context where you want to use them, connect them to other voicings. And that's really important. That That's what most people forget to do when they're working on this. I know I do as well. Sometimes I'll only be checking out voicings and I never really get to this stage. And that's okay, you can always return to it later if you have it in your finger. So if you're finding that you need more material, then that's also the first place you want to look. And if, you, if you're trying to uh, come up with new things, then realize if there's like a certain inversion of a drop two voicing that you're never using or some other type of voicing that you already know, but that you're not using. Go look there because you can fairly easily implement that into your playing. I'm of course curious if you have a way that you're working with new chords, new voicings, and how you try to get them into your playing. So if you have some thoughts on this, please share them in the comments. Uh, if anybody is watching this video, then they're of course interested in it, and uh, I know that I am. And I also find that there's a lot of useful information being shared in the comments of my videos. So if you're interested in this topic, then I would say check out the comments because there's always something to be found in there. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and it's the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. The videos that I publish here every week are on finding some solid methods and good strategies to check out all the interesting things about jazz guitar and improvising. If you like this video and you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. 
It's because of the support that I'm getting from my patrons that I can keep making videos every week. I'm very grateful for that. And if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.